going down tree lined streets which actually prove that there are trees in Kansas. <laughs> which some people don't think there is, but you know, what can I say? And of course the leaves are all turning now. And some of them are getting quite pretty. Particularly the cottonwoods. They turn kind of gold and yellow. And uh, a few maples around that are turning red, but I'm kind of excited. There's two yard sales today, thrift shop, and tomorrow is an auction. So that was an interesting yard sale. She had some pretty nice things, but they were kind of overpriced and she didn't feel like she wanted to negotiate. So that's okay. It's her choice. It's her yard sale. And beautiful day for yard sales. So we found another one. Go around and around here. And we're going to go see what they have to offer. Uh, love this big city driving you know it's really traffic's terrible and this is a joke people I'm not serious and uh, parking's hard to find and you know it has its, its advantages living in a small town okay we're rounding the corner here and we're going to come up on this next garage sale and see what it has to offer and I'm holding the phone and it's a little bumpy so you're coming along for my bumpy ride isn't that exciting and fun? I think so. And you know, it's nice to live right across the street from the big new Catholic church, which is actually a big steel building. <laughs> it's designed to look like a church. How about that? Does the Wii work? Yeah, it was gone. I was like, this was going pretty good. Yeah, it does work. The last time they played with it, it worked. Okay, I'll take it. Okay. And uh, the Xbox games, would you, uh, how much would you take for the whole box? Um, how many are left? You don't count stuff. them. Just make it. Uh, no, <laughs> These are my sons. I have oh, to count them. Okay. <laughs> Hello. This is Joyce Banbury with Thrift and Pick Country Style with a nice little big somewhere in between haul video because I haven't been around for a while and the weather's been nice and we've had a few garage sales and today we had an auction which I didn't stay at because I didn't see anything I wanted but first <clears throat> I'd like to start with a little tribute to Margaret of Texas Gal Treasures Margaret we went looking for minis and we got the Wolfman and uh, whatever that is one, and uh, whatever that is one, I think it looks like a zombie or something. But thanks to you, we had to go find some minis, which we had trouble finding, ended up finding them at Walgreens Drugstore. Problem is, is you never know when you get them what you're going to get. So thank, us, thank you for a little bit of fun in unpackaging them and putting them together and then watching my grandson sit there and play zombies and Wolfman and stuff and crash and bang and probably lose all the pieces eventually. So thanks to Margaret, we had a little bit of fun with minis, Lego minis. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, one garage sale this weekend was a rather affluent home, and um, it provided me with some really, really nice purses, and they're all authentic. She even had the price things. This is Coach. It's a little Coach mini bag. Absolutely perfect condition. Has all the attributes that Coach needs to have to be authentic, so... Um, these should be do, do fairly well. I haven't really looked them up yet, but I've done as much as 45 or $55 with coach bags in the past, so we'll see how it goes. And then she had this really nice summer coach bag with the leather trim. I mean, the quality of a coach bag is just unmistakable. You just really cannot... Um, Imagine a knockoff having any kind of this kind of quality. So this is a summer bag and uh, It's a straw material and trimmed in really really nice leather and this is a carry tote style bag I thought that was pretty nice 
And then she had this one, which she has worn, used a little bit more, is going to need a little bit of cleaning. But these are 100% cotton, so they should clean pretty well. And it's another tote style bag <coughs> uh, that is coach. And as I said, it has all the attributes and uh, the tags. This is from the signature collection and everything in it. Now for those, one, two, three, four, oh, there's one more here. This is a fossil bag. Very nice vintage. It needs a little bit of cleaning too, but some saddle soap will clean that up nicely. And it's very soft, almost a glove-like leather in really, really nice condition. So all four of those bags cost me $30. Can't beat that for good coach bags. And this one isn't a name brand particularly, but I just thought the coloring was kind of cool. Well, it, maybe it is something. Kara, C-A-R-A. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's just a pretty little uh, carry-along bag, and it's leather, and it's in the green and the pink, which are kind of pretty colors, so we'll see how that does. I don't know. I only paid $2 for that one. And then, of course, I'm always looking for cookie cutters, which doesn't interest everybody else, but it does me. But I ran across this bag for a dollar, and these are all uh, characters from uh, Sesame Street. And they're all done up in yellow. Got the cookie monster and all kinds of them. They need a good cleaning, but I do think I'm going to put these up on eBay. Probably, oh, $15 maybe in that neighborhood. I can always come down on them, but this bunch of cookie cutters for a dollar a bag, I just couldn't pass up. The Grouch, all of them, if your kids remember. And <clears throat> found this really nice uh, copper Lennox dolphin. I don't know if the patina on there is designed to be on it, or if uh, it's oxidized patina, but it does say Lennox on it. So, nice little heavy thing I paid 50 cents for. And let's talk a little bit about um, your listing. There, there, there's something I'd like to suggest to you as we talk today, and that is about the language in your description listing. Um, have you, you do a lot of buying on eBay, you go to somebody's listing and it has one line of actual descript description on it and then it'll have a whole bunch of do this, do that, don't do this, we don't do this, we're not going to allow you to do this and so forth and so forth. As the market gets more competitive and as people work harder to get people to their listings and once they get there to stay and then buy something, one thing you want to stop and consider is that language can really turn people off. You know, if you've done, set up your listing properly and you've used all the attributes that eBay gives you, like your shipping and so forth and so forth, you don't have to add all that negative language. The description should be a description of your product. And if you have trouble trying to figure out what that's going to be, Go to a website that's set up professionally, like go to a Docker's website or a Fisher Price website and look at an item and see what the description actually tells you. And then try and be as concise as possible in your description, but leave the neg negative language behind. If you want to put in that you only ship globally, then put in we ship globally exclusively, or we, ex we are exclusively global shippers, uh, or the global program, however you want to word that. But just ignore and put, don't put in all that negative this and that language. It, it's really going to turn people off. And really, you want people to look at your listing. You want people to see your pictures 
and read your description and read your condition and then you want them you want them to go in there and give language that tells them exactly what they need to know in the description about your product that's not covered somewhere else and the re and you want them to know that you appreciate their business and you want the opportunity to have them add to your favorites list and the opportunity to look at your other listings and you can do that automatically when you uh, do a listing. Your listing should be 90% information and 10% everything else. And by information, I mean information about the item specifically. Okay, just wanted you to think about that. And then at the same auction I got the purse, I got the Dream Machine. And I only paid $3 for it, and it's in perfect working condition. Most of them that I saw in a little bit of research on eBay sold between $29 and $39. So it's heavy. I'll have to factor in the shipping. So I'll probably put it up for $39.95, um, maybe with free shipping. I'm not sure how much it's going to cost me, but we'll see. Very nice machine. Very good condition. And then there's always that old caveat. I've sat here time and time again and I've said, you know, do what you know and buy the products that you really know something about and then experiment with others carefully. Do a little test marketing and this and that and the other. Well, my dad, when I was growing up, was probably the least disciplinarian of any dad you'd ever want to know. And his little edict was always, don't do as I do, do as I say. So I'm going to leave his little edict out there on the table while I show you this next purchase. I went to the thrift shop and they had this entire bag of figures. Now I haven't looked in the bag yet. I just bought them because she gave them to me. She had a marked at $10 and she gave them to me for three dollars. Now these are uh, army figures, looks like desert storm figures. I don't know. I got all kinds of figures. I mean we're talking about uh, army figures and I don't know what kind of figures. So if anybody recognizes any of this stuff and they feel like it has any value, would you please please let me know because I certainly just took a risk on this one without ever looking it up or anything else. Just simply because I've watched all your videos and I see some of you can pick up figures and do really well. And of course I've got a grandson that's eight years old so, you know, we prefer he doesn't play with war figures. I don't know if they're marked. Uh, let me see. can't read the mark. Lenard, L-A-N-A-R-D. And then I'm not going to take all of these out because you're getting the idea of what I've got. I've got motorcycles. I've got America Indians. I've got who knows what. <laughs> but every kind of figure you can imagine and a whole lot of extra things in here. So please, 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 if you know anything about this, please tell me I didn't do badly and that I will get some money back out of these because otherwise I'm going to have to eat crow for a long time and stick to things that I really do know about. Isn't that terrible to sit around and tell people one thing and then go out and you see a bargain and you think, ah, i got to have that or i got to try that, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, you know. There it goes. Then, at that same thrift shop, I got this nice old wooden uh, General Electric alarm clock. It's not perfect. In fact, actually, I kind of like the patina on it, don't you? It really makes it uh, look old, and it's got an old, old plug on it. And the back is, you can tell it's been used. I don't know if it works. Uh, she said it did. So I'll take her word for it because that's a uh, the Catholic St. Fidelia's thrift shop and you know they wouldn't lie to me, don't you? So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool and it might bring 25 or $30. I don't think it has a date on it, but it looks pretty uh, 
50s or 40s to me, even earlier maybe. And I found this necklace at the yard sale that had the purses. And I really, I don't know why I liked it. These are, are glass beads and uh, brass. This is uh, brass whatever. And it's clunky. And clunky jewelry just kind of seems to be in right now. And I thought it was really pretty. I don't know that it has a maker on it. I haven't looked. But it ought to be worth something. And I still am buying to put things up on Etsy. But, you know, I, I only sell on eBay. It's my main thing because uh, it's what I know the best. And even though then I went back to the thrift shop uh, where I found the figures. And uh, they had these, which I thought were really interesting because I really enjoyed the graphics. And they're dated, these two are dated 1964. And this one's dated 1965. And uh, they're, I don't know, kind of a prelude to what we used to, to hang uh, in your window um, before, I guess, there was so much of the, the uh, stained glass was so popular. Anyway, I like the, the way it, uh, I like the wording on it. <laughs> it says, uh, the colors delight day or night, viewed from inside or outside. Stained, leaded, glass-like ornament of handcrafted, unbreakable plastic. Window view. So, you know, these are just really something neat. Uh, the boxes are almost as neat or neater than the uh, actual uh, item is. So anyway, I thought that was really nice. Probably getting maybe anywhere between 1995 and 24.50 out of them uh, bundled together as a group. Okay, now this guy here, I had to get some opinions on him. I got him back at the um, uh, garage sale, and I just thought he was kind of cool, and it was what a dollar. And um, but the problem being that it's one-sided, so I wasn't sure if there was supposed to be an eye on that side. You know, it kind of looks like there was. So I asked several people at the yard sale. I said, what do you think? Do you think there's supposed to be an eye on this side or it's just blank? And everybody kind of agreed that they thought it was really supposed to uh, be blank on the back side and just have the eye on the front. This is a straw rattan type uh, material and these, this is wood. And I don't know, it's just cool. It probably won't bring a lot of money, but it's interesting. It's old. It's vintage. And for anybody who likes island or Hawaiian stuff, they'll probably find a shelf for it, don't you think? What do you think? You supposed you think there's supposed to be an eye on there? Looks like there's a little round spot where I had one. But I don't have one like it, so if there was the one there, it's gone now. And I found this at the, the same place I found the parrot. Very nice. Polaroid 635 Spirit Instant Camera. Has the box in the book. Unfortunately, it also has writing all over the top where somebody wrote this and that and so forth and so forth. So I don't know what all that's about. But anyway, very nice camera in like new condition. And um, these can go fairly well. Uh, they don't make tons of money, but, you know, they're pretty nice to have a, they're pretty nice to sell, and they're pretty consistent sellers. Come on, up. You can do it. Ooh, there you go. It has the flash and everything with it. Very nice condition. So I'm hoping I'll make a few dollars on that. I, uh, <clears throat> have sold Polaroids before, and they've done pretty good for me, so I'm not, I'm not going to be too worried about it. And they're, of course, vintage. Now, I did find these three guys. They're on their way to Jerusalem. No, Bethlehem. Sorry, I don't want to get my stories mixed up here. One, two, three. And they have a little thing for the candles. These are probably late 50s or early 60s. They're made out of a composition material. They're marked 50 cents a piece. Uh, I don't clunk it. And they're marked all marked Japan. And I've sold these before. I can get... 25 to 29 dollars for the set and uh, I think they're in really beautiful in fact I don't think I've ever seen a set of them in such nice condition there isn't anything 
on them to indicate there's a chip or a crack or anything. So one thing I want to remind you is that people are buying decorations now. Things to decorate their homes with for Christmas are being purchased now. After Thanksgiving, most people will turn their mind to gift buying. So if you've got decorations and ornaments out there, you need to get them up now. And uh, just let them go until after the holidays. Then after the holidays, about the first weekend in, in December, you might start drawing them back a little bit or discounting them and then putting up gift items because that's when they're going to do their gift buying and depending on how it's shipped, um, they uh, will want to get them in time for Christmas. So kind of look at your market a little bit and think about what you're doing when you put ornaments and decorations up late in, in November or early December because people really have done a lot of their decorating, which doesn't mean they won't buy them. It just means they're, they're focused more on gift giving. I don't know if I've showed you these before, but these are soft book panels that are sold in a yard increment. And when they're cut out and put together and stuffed, they make a child, uh, infant child or a little older uh, book. And the instructions and everything are right there on it so that you know how to make them. Uh, I've had quite a few of these and they sell fairly well for me. It's not one of those things you would think about. Sometimes if I have more than one panel, I will bundle them together, particularly if they're like, this is an ABC type book, B is for bears, and I've had this one before. I sold one last week or two weeks ago for $19.95 that was Precious Moments. And so if you find something like that, you want to make sure you pick them up. Usually you can get them for 50 cents or even less, sometimes in a bundle. I would never spend more than a dollar for one of them. So that's something else to think about. And the other thing is that these kind of things you kind of want to get out there now too because a lot of people are focused on making gifts uh, for Christmas and uh, they want to get their things and get them going. I got these two uh, sealed cross-stitch uh, kits at the Ark. And this one was $3, and it's the Goodness Sampler, and let's see. <laughs> well, I had a date on it. I lost my, I lost it. It went away. Where did it go? Come back. Come back, Shane. Come back. I think this one's 84, 1984. And this one I thought was really pretty because this is actually eight Christmas napkins, and this is a Busilla kit and it's five dollars is what I paid for it but I'm almost positive that I can probably get maybe 25 out of it so it's a good flip these are things you a lot of you already look for are the Busilla and other needlework kits but make sure you get them up now because you want people to get them in time to make them in time for Christmas and shipping does take a little bit of time you know Okay, are we having fun yet? Oh yeah, we're having a blast. Uh, the last thing I have is this set of knives. And I got this at a Goodwill in Salina several weeks ago. And it's made, they're made by Oster, and I paid $7 for the set. Um, these are pretty well made. They're not the top of the line, but they're, they're a nice set. They need to be cleaned up. And they're stainless steel, made in China. I don't think they're vintage. I'm pretty sure they're modern. It has a complete set of six steak knives, and then it has uh, other uh, knives that uh, don't look like they've ever been sharpened or anything. They're in nice condition, but they do need to be cleaned up. And since they're stainless steel, and it has the knife sharpener, and uh, then it also has the kitchen scissors, which I use my kitchen scissors quite a bit. These are really nice. Even has an opener on it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to sell these as a unit like this, but I think not because this, the block is so heavy that it's, and, and the knives are quite light. So I may just take them and piece them out and sell them like the uh, six steak knives and the, other knives or something. I don't know. What do you think? Got any ideas on that one? 
Well, I had fun this weekend. I really enjoyed it. Even though I went to the auction and nothing else was going on, I had a good time because I found some really neat stuff. And I think I'm going to have things that are going to turn over and make really good profits for me. And I'm going to start getting them listed and getting them up. And I love to see what you're doing. I love your videos. I pay attention to them. I don't always do what you tell me to do. But I do my best. So happy thrifting. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye now.